in rivers, we know where the water is going. And so it's easy to show in real time the changes that in both the CO2 drawdown and the environmental benefits. Welcome to The Switch. I'm Elena Casas. Scientists overwhelmingly agree we must cut our carbon emissions, but many also argue that we need to extract carbon from the atmosphere in order to preserve a livable planet. Rivers deliver carbon dioxide to the ocean as bicarbonate, but what if we increased how much they can absorb? That's the idea behind Carbon Run, which adds limestone to rivers to increase their alkalinity. And founder Shannon Sterling joins me now. Shannon, hi. To start with then, how do rivers and oceans absorb carbon naturally? Sure. So we can start with the oceans. And oceans absorb CO2 naturally, like they breathe in and out. And when there's more CO2 in the atmosphere, they have a net drawdown and store in the ocean. And they also release when there's more... CO2 in the ocean releasing upward. Rivers, uh, they absorb CO2 um, through the land surface, pumps the CO2 that's coming from the plants and weathering um, into the rivers. And then the rivers transport that CO2 and bicarbonate to the ocean for long-term storage. On the banks of the West River Pictou in Nova Scotia in eastern Canada, this silo houses a machine that grinds up limestone into a powder that is then released into the river. Limestone is alkaline and the idea of adding it to rivers dates back to the 1970s to restore water quality after acid rain when industrial pollution made lakes and rivers toxic. Only later did scientists discover it also helps rivers sequester more carbon. Part of the reason why we've been able to move so quickly is that in rivers, we know where the water is going. And so it's easy to show in real time the changes that in both the CO2 drawdown and the environmental benefits. So that provides a lot of confidence and ability to verify by independent um, entities how much carbon dioxide we are removing. Where then is the financing from this project coming from? Because you're selling carbon offsets, aren't you? So we recently have received a $25 million offtake uh, pre-purchase agreement as well from uh, an entity called Frontier, which includes uh, blue chip companies such as Meta and Alphabet, Stripe and Shopify. And that is on the voluntary carbon market. So currently we are selling high quality credits to the voluntary carbon market. That 25 million aims to pay for the extraction of just over 55,000 tonnes of carbon dioxide, a cost of about $450 a tonne, although Carbon Run aims to eventually reduce that to around 100. Limestone is in the industry is, has the lowest carbon and environmental footprint. And it's also very common, widely available. So it, then it's a question of geographies. The goal to, is to produce carbon dioxide removal at a low cost so that it can scale in the markets. Carbon Run says mining and moving the limestone would produce about one tonne of emissions for every 29 tonnes of carbon sequestered. And the technique has already restored some of Canada's devastated rivers. At the ecosystem scale, there's studies demonstrating um, salmon populations in Nova Scotia here uh, tripled after 10 years of, of liming a, a polluted river. Why is it crucial now that we invest in carbon extraction schemes? Carbon dioxide removal is baked into the IPCC forecasts for the future, our ability to meet 1.5 degree targets or what those warming are. So if we do not have carbon dioxide removal at scale at millions of tons by 2050, we will have much higher um, global warming. How much of that removal target can river liming meet? So what our models are showing, in the, in, certainly in the millions of tons and then into the billions of tons um, is what we're predicting. And that could be up to 5 or 10% of the total need per year. Are you optimistic that we can meet that carbon removal target that you mentioned? Yep, I am, and I'm determined <laughs> for my kids and, and, it's, uh, and for our planet.